Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Penny Prepper. Today's video, we're going to be discussing untapped resources for prepping. Before we get started today, I'm going to ask that you click that like button and subscribe if you're into emergency preparedness, the outdoors, and just learning some new skills. I'm going to start out by saying the first and most unutilized asset is going to be the internet. Um, nowadays, people have a supercomputer right in the palm of their hand, right in their pocket at all times, and at most times, people still ask questions and uh, try to hypothesize their own answers when they could easily go right into their phone and figure out the answer. But uh, I would say the first and most important resource that's out there is gonna be the internet and it's free. Um, on top of that, so many of the websites, uh, one of the ones that I utilize a lot is gonna be FEMA.gov. Uh, that is a website that is for the entire United States and essentially it gives great documentation, great guides. Um, they have active incidents going on now on the website. They have preparedness plans. They have ways to contact them. They have additional resources that you can actually contact and or utilize. It's truly an incredible website. Um, I highly suggest if you haven't gone on FEMA's website, go ahead, check it out. Um, they have checklists that you can actually uh, select certain disasters and get a checklist for in order to be better prepared for that, such as right now it is June. That is, uh, I think it is Hurricane Preparedness Month, which is perfect because I know that they were just talking about hurricanes or tropical storms starting up. So if you are in a place that is prone to hurricanes or tropical storms, then hop on FEMA's website and um, start to utilize those checklists if you have not done so already. The next one I'm gonna say for me is Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency's website, uh, Pima.gov. Basically, that is Pennsylvania specific, but you know, as far as the specific emergencies that it lists, a lot of other states can have those happen there, such as earthquakes, flooding, fire, um, also, I believe one of the ones is a terrorist or um, some sort of man-made disaster. So that's something that could happen in just about any other state. So utilizing other state resources can really help you. I also like the way that the state website is set up. It is a lot easier to navigate than the um, federal website and I think that that just has to do with uh, how the government is run as far as its ease of use. Next is there are actually um, county specific websites such as um, the hometown I grew up in, Lebanon County. They would have their own emergency management agency website. Um, again, that is great because you can get a more specific and detailed oriented uh, list of what's going on as well as resources so if you need to know where the local hospitals are and what their specialties might be as well as contact numbers for them great resource because it is more detailed and more specific to your area um, also with that I have seen a couple of township or um, municipality type websites typically those are a lot smaller, not well run, um, unless you have somebody who's really into IT and able to build up that website. But uh, typically the state website and or county websites are gonna be where you wanna go for the most resources that will be more specific to your area and also be great resources to help you out when you need it. Also, being in Pennsylvania, we have a program called PA211. Basically, that is a resource that you can utilize to find other resources. I only discovered it recently, but basically by going to PA211.com, uh, it will give you a list of organizations and uh, resources that can help you out, such as for mental health, uh, poison control. It also has numbers for shelters as well as hospitals and other free resources if you are in need of that. 
Um, also, a great part of it, I thought one of the best things it said was, are you having an emergency? Dial 911. If this is a mental health emergency, dial the 988 number, which is great. Um, I know that that has been coming about recently, and I'll cover that here in a hot second. Some other great free resources is going to be the redcross.org. Um, that's a way that you can actually learn how to handle some emergencies and or get some training. Uh, a lot of times they teach AD and CPR, and that is a great tool to have. Um, something that if you see somebody go down, you can help them out instead of just calling 911 and hoping for the best. Also, the Red Cross is great as far as they do have products. Uh, you can get a lot of hand crank radios that have solar power. I actually took one out uh, on my most recent camping adventure. Uh, unfortunately, I think that it has gone bad. It's sitting in a bag for quite a long time. But again, great ones. They also have LED lights that you plug into your wall and when the power goes out, that kicks in. So uh, not just resources as far as information, they also have great products. Um, also the Salvation Army going right into that. The Red Cross and Salvation Army a lot of times will help people out if they are uh, dealing with a disaster such as house fire or being displaced by a disaster. Uh, they will also help people get fed and clothed after a disaster, so great resources. A lot of times the local government or state government will contact them and utilize them in mass depending on what has happened. YouTube, obviously a huge resource here. Um, you can get so much free information. A lot of people who have personal experience dealing with these emergencies such as hurricanes. I live in Pennsylvania where it's not a huge priority. Um, maybe Philadelphia area, um, which is closer to the coast, but really, typically where I live in Harrisburg, we normally only get the wind and the water from it. Um, we're not getting as much of the other issues uh, from hurricanes. However, you can utilize YouTube to find somebody who lives in Florida and maybe they have been through, maybe they lived there for 25 years and they've seen every hurricane in that time and they can give you some great insight as to uh, what they've dealt with and maybe how to overcome some certain issues that they've run into that you won't find on a state or federally uh, funded website. So YouTube, great tools um, to get more specific and detailed information. And a lot of times it's entertaining. Hopefully this is somewhat entertaining for those of you who are watching today. All right, one of my last ones is gonna be state maps. Um, I love this resource. I love to get the free maps whenever I can find them. Um, yes, you can buy detail-oriented maps as far as like the Appalachian Trail or State Park, stuff like that, um, at a lot of stores. Uh, Sportsman Guide has them. But really getting the free maps that have the roads, maybe state parks and attractions on them, um, I find are really neat because they are huge. Uh, a lot of times I actually planned my trip from Harrisburg up to Cherry Springs using one of the free state maps. I actually traced which roads would be best. Um, granted, I did actually use my GPS when actually going up there, but you know, up that way, you actually run into a lot of dead zones. So that would have been perfect if my phone would have ran into one of those dead zones and we wouldn't have been able to figure out how to get the rest of the way. I could have pulled out one of these maps and said, oh, okay, I need to go this far, hit this next turn, and then I continue on there till this, that, and the other. And then um, really great resources and they're free. All right, hitting my call to action a little bit early here, but I want you to pull your phone out right now. Open up your contacts and get ready to put this phone number in there. It's gonna be 1-800-222-1222. That is the poison control hotline. Uh, as an EMT, I've had to call them multiple times and there is always somebody that will answer. And basically what you do is you tell them either the description or the type, the milligrams, uh, whatever information you have on the pills or whatever somebody has ingested. Uh, let's say for example, if somebody were to take, actually I don't wanna say anything specific uh, just in case, but let's say that somebody 
ingests this can here of Monster and let's say that it's not drinkable. Let's say it actually is a cleaning chemical that just looks like it's supposed to be. But you can call them and say, this can, it's black, it has these markings on it. It says Monster Energy, low carb, 16 fluid ounces, and give them as much information as you can. They will basically guide you through the procedure of, you know, should you vomit, should you not, should you drink water, should you drink activated charcoal, and they will guide you through the process to basically give you the best outcome that you can possibly have from that. Right, this is one I actually found on uh, PA211.com. That's dis the Disaster Distress Hotline. It's 1-800-985-5990. That, uh, they didn't give too much detail, but basically it's a hotline that you utilize in case of a uh, regional or personal disaster, and they can hopefully hook you up with some resources to get you through that or at least start to deal with it. All right, uh, next is gonna be the places that you actually have to go in order to get this help. Um, so first one's gonna be church and faith-based resources. Uh, a lot of times churches are a symbol of where good people are that can help you. Um, a lot of times people will seek out churches because they know a lot of times they're not gonna be judged or have that uh, that stigma around them or need to necessarily get reported. Uh, whereas like a hospital, depending on what happens, they must report, yes, churches do too, um, but it all depends. So really, churches are a great resource for people who maybe just need a little bit of food, a little bit of clothing. Uh, they have resources that they can help people out and they are more than willing to help. They're great people. Um, also, there's hygiene resources um, like free clinics and hospitals. A lot of times, uh, if you go into one of those uh, places like a hospital or a free clinic, they have either uh, small sample stuff that they can give you or they can at least keep you out of the elements for a little bit, give you some food until you're ready to head back out. Um, also, there's places like homeless shelters, soup kitchens, um, stuff like that. Also good resources, but it's a little harder to find them. Some of them have certain criteria for you to enter. Uh, I know we, uh, there have been times where we've tried to get people into a shelter and one of the, you know, criteria is they can't either be uh, detoxing or have had drugs in their system recently. So that can be a little bit harder to deal with sometimes. But also there is stuff like government assistance, which you can find on a lot of these websites as well to help. At the next and last one I really wanted to touch on here was the 988 number. Uh, that has really come into its own as of recently as far as emergency mental health goes. Uh, a lot of people have been utilizing this number to get the assistance that they need because there is still a stigma on mental health. Um, also, as far as contacting your county crisis agency, a lot of times they can put you in contact with some resources that can help you out and get you safe long enough to be seen or at least uh, deal with whatever's going on at that time. Uh, also, that 988 number is free. Uh, I've never called it myself, but from what I hear, it is a great resource and it's better than uh, just calling 911 straight out of the gate because if you are having an emergency, mental health episode you may not be thinking clearly and maybe say some things to for instance a dispatcher who uh, they're trying to figure out what they can figure out for their safety of their people responding whereas if that 988 number they are trying to focus on you and try to uh, get a good gauge of where your mental health is and maybe get those resources to you immediately all right again these are resources for preppers um, obviously, if you have a child or something like that, having the uh, poison control hotline number is hugely important. I can't tell you how many times people have called in there um, before the ambulance got there, heard what they've said, and uh, thanked them for telling them because a lot of times your first instinct might be to tell somebody to vomit, and actually having some of that stuff come back up can be twice as damaging. So it's probably a good thing if you have that number in your phone and just save it 
you may never have to use it and let's hope that you never do all right that's all we have for today's video if there's anything you'd like to see in the upcoming videos please comment and let me know i have started making shorts so again if you are interested in watching some shorts i'm going to try to make some on medical knowledge as well as um, national hurricane awareness month so be sure to check those out stay safe and stay prepared